hello, hello, and hello. I've got this fancy selfie light, but for some reason the selfie light doesn't really want to work today. So um, if I'm kind of in the half dark like this, then it is because the light decides it's Sunday and we're not working on a Sunday. Anyway, it is time for our Sunday interview today. I have only just cut stream of the um, Crafts Dog Show in Birmingham. Well, I, I watched it on YouTube, but I'm, I am I was watching the gun dog display. So for any gun dog fans out there, I've got you. Unfortunately, the Vizsla didn't win. But now I know of the existence of a Spumoni dog. There you go, go and Google it. But <laughs> now stop talking about dogs. I'd like to talk about Natasha. <laughs> I'm trying to do it this way around because last time when we did the recorded video and I did all this pointing, I was in the actual replay, I was always pointing the other way. But there she is. <laughs> Hi, Natasha. How are you? How has your Sunday been? Yeah, it's been quiet actually. It's been nice. It's been nice. They're, they're good days, aren't they? Yes, relaxing days. When it's not too mental. Yes. The most days it's not too mental anyway. <laughs> Cool. So I tried the light again, but I'm sure it will leave me again at one point. Like this. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so um, just for everyone that's watching, hello. If you like us and you are actually watching, give us a thumbs up. If you think that all the world needs to hear it, then please feel free to share it far and wide. And uh, we shall get started straight away because I was really looking forward to this interview. <laughs> um, just a little intro how it came to be, really. And um, so Natasha is a member of the group. I'm not even entirely sure how you found the group. I can't remember because I didn't know you. No, it just, I, I think it just came up when I was looking yeah. for groups, happy groups. <laughs> yeah, so and you, you basically like joined and you were full on, you were 100%, you were liking posts, you were sharing posts, you added members and commented on the question. So I sent her a message and said, thank you. And it's really cool. And I really appreciate it. And so we started talking. Um, and then you sent me a link to a blog you were you wrote, and um, if it's okay, I'll add the link into the comments yeah, yeah, later yeah. on. That's absolutely fine. Um, and basically, in that blog, you told about your story and you wrote down what your childhood was like and basically how you lived until now. Um, and um, so then I asked questions about that and found out that that was the first time you shared that story in public. And um, I asked if you would be happy to share it in an interview as well. And you said you were. And I thought it is because that is one of those subjects, those taboo subjects that we don't really talk about. And it's one of those behind closed door subjects, and especially now with the whole Me Too um, initiative in Hollywood and it, I think it is a subject that really is coming now and people start to open up a bit more so I think it is a really important interview and I'm really really happy you agreed to talk about your story thank you that's okay cool so um without any further ado do you want to go right in do you? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll jump right in. Okay. Close to the camera now. Um, so basically, I just, I, I really want to talk on just to say that um, I lost my dad when I was four months old, so I never really got to have my dad around. Um, and I moved quite a lot. Um, my mum found a, a new man, which was my stepdad, and he was an alcoholic um so his most thing was violence um and he hit my sister's head against a serving bench in the house and uh, she had a nosebleed and everything and he hit us all with a metal pole and he always used to make sure that we were always in silence basically around the house um he'd throw us around like by our necks and throw us on the sofa and things um and 
luckily all right, social services have come in and they actually moved me and my two older sisters out of that situation um but we moved in with our great great auntie which is a uh, relation to my mum and she had my uncle there who basically would um abuse us physically um and he would just ask us to strip down and he would just caress and everything like that um so we kind of went through that for we were there for like a couple of years and with that on top of that we obviously had my great auntie she didn't know anything about it but she in her own way of like the old fashionedness also had the tendency to I mean she accused us of killing her dog because of making noise in the house because we weren't officially in that day I mean we put taught as very young that we were seen but not heard anywhere um so we were there for like a couple of years then we moved again into another auntie and uncle's house until they divorced um and then we got kicked out again from there because he met someone else and then i basically moved a couple of more times um as a child i moved quite a lot um and we were that was trying maybe changing our schools and having to make new friends all the time. So it was never something that was secure. Mm. Um, and then as I grew up, my relationships I had were always, there was always something, tendency to go, to go wrong. That was always triggered that came into it or they didn't treat you very well. Um, I got raped twice by a couple of exes. Um, I've got, controlled by one of my exes I uh, he literally just wouldn't let me be me basically so that's kind of how I grew up to now I mean mm. I'm now in a obviously loving relationship I'm not mm. getting controlled or anything like that um which is amazing for me um which I think has made me more open mm. yeah and um just if I if it's okay yeah. to ask some questions so and while, when you were abused at home and you said that your stepdad and your uncle and they were quite physically brutal to you, so you must have shown some physical signs of that, like, I don't know, black eyes, scratches, bruises. Um, were, I mean, was I, there I, anyone that was suspicious in any way or that thought there was something going on? I, well, no one really, I mean, no one really did anything. I mean, I think the main thing that we have, and I mean, um, I know it's Mother's Day, but for me, it was hard because obviously she was there, but she really didn't do anything because in a way, I know that she would do anything for a man, however they treat her. So, I mean, she lived in that day where, like, you know, you had to put food on the table when they walked in from work. So that would be her. That's how she dealt with her relationships. And I think from that point, like, I I mean, obviously, we had social services in our life um, because our stepdad kept getting arrested and put into prison and coming back out. But my mum would always take them back. OK, so they so were already happened. suspicious of that situation. It was not that he was actually reported saying. Yeah, they, I, well, I don't know about that bit, but obviously we kind of realised that when we got moved out because it was yeah. only me and my two older sisters that got moved straight away. So I have younger siblings who, are, they were his, they were my stepdads. Um, yeah. And they still lived with them for a while. And then they eventually got adopted out um, with other families too. Um, but with him going in and out of prison and I think somewhere along the line, obviously someone got suspicious and reported it. But I find that they, they obviously need like a lot of evidence yeah. um, to actually put anything in there. And obviously because um, me and my older sisters weren't his, it kind of made that bit, I suppose, a little bit easier in that way. So we got moved out for that reason. And the fact, obviously, they obviously got that evidence. I mean, my sister got hit by a serving bench um, and, it obviously, and it went through court to who we were going to go with. And I mean, in a way, we all thought, oh, this is, you know, lucky that we actually stayed with family quite a lot. Mm. So, I mean, we moved in with my great auntie. That was my relation to my mum. And then we moved in 
who actually we swapped into my dad's side of the family and moved in with my auntie, who's mm-hmm. my dad's sister. And we lived with them, which was great. I mean, we lived with them for like eight, nine years until they divorced. Mm. Um, so that part of my life was fine. There was nothing really in it apart from when he met someone else and they divorced. And um, But I think everyone, I mean, I can, I can say like I'm a lot better with it now, but mm. there are still triggers in everyday life that you have mm. to kind of deal with. Mm from such a traumatic traumatic events basically yeah 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 you mentioned a a photo that your sister sent you the other day wasn't it or name that she mentioned yeah 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 um basically um i mean i think things just crop up from your past like there'll be a face that crops up or a name that will crop up that will just send you back to those times I mean, he was in our childhood and he actually um, didn't do anything to me, but he was there. He lived with my granddad Mm. and um, he got arrested for cruelty to like animals and um, molesting young children. And it kind of put me back in that situation when I was little and it was happening Mm. to me. It kind of threw me off guard and put me like, you know, falling down a rabbit hole um it basically just puts you back in that situation where you feel that vulnerable Mm. and it's yeah and it's basically trying to deal with that but because i don't think anyone in that situation really gets over it completely Mm. you just kind of keep moving forwards Mm. in a really uh, you know as much as you can yeah and um back to when you were a child and um how did you manage to keep going did you have any any anyone that served as your anchor so anyone at school maybe that you could tell about the things that were going on at home or how how did you manage to keep going and just move on we we got taught as a very young age that anything that happened in a house stayed in the house So you weren't Mm. allowed to talk about anything that happened in the house to anybody else. And I think that's one of the things that stuck. So you can't talk to anyone about it. There's, you know, da da da. And I think that's what stuck with me. So the really only people that when I was younger were my two older sisters. Mm. And I think that's, I mean, we get on really well now. um, And I think we all know that we went through a really hard time. But we've had all the good times as well. Mm. And it's just something that you have to remember is the good times in between all this stuff or that the fact that we, you know, we're, we've got you know, more siblings because of my stepdad. They wouldn't be there if we didn't have them because, mm. they, you know, and it's things like that. You kind of have to put the positive in it. Like I wouldn't have younger siblings if, you know, if my mum didn't get with my stepdad, even mm. though he was an alcoholic. It's putting those good points on the life that, you know makes it worth it in a way like that's how I've looked at I've looked at it like well I wouldn't have my younger brother and sister we got on really well um Mm. without the fact that my mum met him and my mum is the same she will meet anyone that's like an alcoholic and she will be with them um Mm. which is you know at the end of the day that's just my mum um and it makes every situation a little bit hard with her for me it makes it a bit hard for having that constant you know everyone probably (laughs) um gets that point where you know everything's frustrating because she is my mum she believes in a lot of things that are hard for me to really get around my own head Mm -hmm. um even though I know it's things that have happened to her too it's kind of a weird way of trying to except that those things that she thinks are real and are fine are not really normal Mm. in that sort of sense. But I've worked out putting positive notes on all these sorts of things like, you know, my brothers and sisters, I wouldn't have them. And, you know, I have have such a strong relationship with my two older sisters because of everything we went through, all the moves we went through, how we treated, we've always had each other. Okay, so through all the moves, the three of you stayed together. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, that was just the light that came back on. 
right into up. <laughs> there you go. I just turn it off now because it's kind of off-putting. Um, I I find that really fascinating how you can turn like even such a strong negative situation and how you can give it such a positive spin and just say yeah without him i wouldn't have my step um siblings so that is is very very fascinating and in fact vasha said i don't know if you can see it uh, but she said you are a very strong woman <laughs> I, can't um, I wasn't looking at that <laughs> yeah well it, it definitely sound i mean yeah you probably had your 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 lows a lot but i mean i've only just known you for those last few months and i you, you're just like the the impersonation of happiness and um optimism so it's it was a bit of a shock when i um read that blog and you said it was for quite a few people was it because loads of people that knew you had no idea yeah what loads, your of people was like. loads of people that i went to school with um that i was friends with actually just didn't know at all i mean one of my friends she lives um in australia new zealand area and basically she read it um and she said i knew nothing at all i didn't know any of it and it took her by surprise yeah uh, and i think things like that do you you know i obviously learned at such a young age how to hide these things and how to not talk about them because that is exactly what i got taught don't talk yeah. about it it's if it's in the house it's in the house no one needs to know yeah and it, and that's when you know it's kind of like okay well i don't i just don't talk about it mm. and and go from there so that's i mean that's how we learn we don't talk about it anywhere else yeah which is why i think you know the fact that i had sisters was great you know many people don't have that and i you know that's even worse kind of thing that's an even worse situation that you don't have that person when you get taught at such a young age to hide mm. these things or to not talk about them yeah. yeah. Wow. So, um, I, I, did you have things like birthday parties? Was it the sort of, um, were there good times? We like, had, well, when I lived with my great auntie, we used to have, we used to celebrate the birthdays. So we used to get like a birthday cake and a present. But as I said, like, it's, you're seen and not heard. So you'd have a present for like five minutes. Like, here, here's your present. And the only present I remember when I was younger was a doll that um, did music and talked a little bit. And that's the only doll I remember from when I was mm. little. And I literally did a five minute car journey with this doll and never saw it again. Oh. And that was literally how it was with our presents. It was kind of like, here you go, you can have it for five minutes, now it's gone. And I've never seen, I've never ever seen it. Um, but like so that at that point that's how our birthdays were until we moved again into our auntie and uncle's house um yeah. so we celebrated birthdays christmases all of that sort of stuff happened at that point yeah in my life so for that like seven eight years that we were living with them before they got divorced is when we were celebrating all the birthdays and christmases yeah. like properly and actually got you know presents to keep as you would say yeah that's that's good that things then got a bit better one thing that that stuck with me because just to let everyone know we had a little free meeting um last week and one thing that stuck with me was you don't really remember like how you learned certain things as a child you know like riding a bike and things like that and you just said yeah, that yeah. you remember you only learned swimming because someone pushed you into a pool um uh, yeah. and that sounds a bit mad, but um, yeah, basically, um, I don't remember how I, I can ride a bike. I don't remember how I learned to ride a bike at all. Mm. Um, but to swim, me and my sisters were on holiday with my great auntie and a couple of other relatives, actually, and he just picked us up and threw us in. Mm. All three of us, he just picked us up, threw us in, mm. and we were like, I, we were in Corfu, so we weren't even in this country, um, mm. and and that's how I kind of learned to swim. And I even, um, as I nanny, like the three children I look after, they're like, so how did you learn to swim? And I like, I got thrown in a swimming pool. They're like, what? I was like, that's just, I was like, obviously I had to swim or drown. It was one of the yeah. two. Um, and luckily enough, you know, we all, we all swam, so it was fine. Um, 
um and that's kind of the only kind of real things that I know I've kind of blocked everything else out I think mm. and that's where I did it I disassociated myself with all of these things mm. and you kind of then don't remember all these situations like that's why I said I don't remember how I rid- rode a bike I learned how to ride a bike mm. but I know I could do it mm. so yeah. it's kind of different situations for different things I think yeah yeah right and then because um, that was another thing that really um, impressed me in our conversation, because you then talked about how you managed to turn what happened to you into strength and how you um, saw the good side in it. Um, do you want to elaborate on that? Because you gave a few examples how, you, well, how you've how you almost turned it into a positive thing um, in a way. Yeah, I think for for me, I think like everything you've gone through, it kind of, it does make you grow up, which is a bit of a bad point to it. It makes you grow up a lot quicker than you really should. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think I got to the point where, you know, like 13, I was cooking, I was using a washing machine. And I think a lot of them, like nowadays, there's plenty of people out there that don't, you know, have children that don't do any of those things. But I didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, at that age, we were, changing our younger sis- like siblings nappies and looking after them and doing things for them and I think for that it's kind of weird because obviously I mean I, I enjoy cooking but it hasn't put me off cooking um but it's pushed it's pushed those bits into my life where I had to obviously learn to cook and I obviously had to learn how to do the washing um and I think in a way those things are the good points of that because a lot of people don't get pushed into do or get told, you know, taught or te- um, to actually learn these these skills kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I've put that in place in my nannying job. I've, you know, I look after three children. So I basically get them to do, you know, main meals and desserts and they pick a recipe and they do things like that. So I can put it in place in my job but and like make sure that they're learning those skills too at a young age so they know how how to look after themselves in a way it's kind of got that independency bit in it because I had to feel like I had I could look after myself Mm. because it didn't feel like I you know I had my sisters but I didn't really have anyone else I kind of got to that point where it was you know I've got to rely on myself yeah no and you you mentioned it there briefly you you're now a nanny you work as a nanny um, yeah. And your two older sisters also do um, work with children. So the, all three of you are very into helping children and making sure that they have a happier childhood than you did, which is really yeah, great. Yeah, I, mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want anyone to go through what I went through as a child, not yeah. not that far. But, um, and I think that's where it all stems from. Like We've always had that. I mean, I've never wanted any of my younger siblings to go through that either it's kind mm. of like you get to that point where you're looking out for them mm. like even more for the, more for, more from you you're looking out for them because you don't want anything to happen to them either and i do i get to that point where i'd never want a child to go through what i went through when i was younger and that's the reason i work with them like mm. it gives me that bit of you know i see the parents with them all the time mm. um but it does it gives you that point um and I think that's the difference when I kind of look at my mum and I go, okay, um, you know, she has done odd things for me throughout the rest of my life, but there's never going to be a stage where she could apologise for any of the stuff that's happened. Mm. And it's kind of like, you can't keep waiting around for something that's not going to happen. It's like, I don't get, you know, presents from my mum unless I'm physically in front of her. And everyone questions that relationship. It's like, she'll want a present because that's how she feels loved. Mm. So she will demand a present just because that's how she feels, that's how she'll feel loved from everyone. Mm. Um, And I think it kind of gets to that point where do I, do I not? And I did question it the last couple of years. I mean, like I said, it's Mother's Day today and I actually for me personally I haven't actually spoken to my mum I've spoken to my partner's mum I've seen her we've given her flowers but I'm still at that stage I'm still trying to work on that 
we used to have quite a good relationship with I used to have quite a good relationship with my mum but obviously I'm developing on myself and it's kind of interfering in that relationship yeah just a bit of the fact of everything that's happened and it's just getting back to that bit where in a civil way I guess because I'm never really going to have that close relationship with her that mm. you know lots of people do have with their mums mm. um and I think a lot of people find it kind of weird that I don't have that relationship with her because mm. they don't know the whole story yeah yeah um, I think it's I mean your your whole story is a is a great example for you never really know another person and it's so easy to judge people on I don't know their appearance what they say how they act and so on but you never really know where yeah. they're coming from what happened to them what state of mind they're in so um if if anything that that is a, a great example um for for what happened to you because you said nobody in your school knew either um what was what was happening and it's just yeah, I find it so um, humbling in a way because, um, yeah, it's I, I can't believe that these things actually happen to people. So I know that sounds like a very, very innocent and naive thing. But for me, it's always, you know, that happens in movies. Um, but it's, yeah, it's so fascinating how you came out of that and you went through a lot of personal development and you already you mentioned it yourself um you're now moving on and you're working uh, working on all the things that happened to you um but you also now have a very um good business you're in a very happy relationship you said and you have been for nine years i believe that's at the end of this month actually nine years is at the end of this month yeah um yeah no it's an absolutely amazing relationship and I love him to pieces. He's great, and he treats me really, really well. Yeah, and, and very supportive. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 You, you must be as a as a as a man. I mean, we're women. We're, we're hard work. Let's face it. <laughs> yeah. Very hard work. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, he yeah he's kind of like the person that you know. I rely on, as I would say, for everything, <laughs> yeah. which, you know, can be difficult, I guess, sometimes, but he is, yeah, he's always really supportive, he's always there when I need him all the time, so, yeah. and it yeah. kind of, like, switch around <laughs> yeah. for me, because yeah. I'm just, okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's amazing, <laughs> um, and... As you are such a happy, optimistic person, do you have any happiness tips for daily life or any tips and tricks how to keep smiling? Because you do smile a lot. I know, I'm smiling a lot now. Um, I do have some. I, I do have some things, but I have to show them. So yes. basically, I have a self-care project book. Okay. So I only got this recently, actually, and it's got little tasks in it. So there's a bit where... I don't know if I can show you a picture. There's a bit where it says, write mm -hmm. down all your image. And there's another bit in here that says, write down all the negative things about yourself or what you've been telling yourself and then rub it out because it's all wrong. So you actually uh -huh. write it down and then you have to cross it all out. Yeah. There's all little different tasks in it. Okay. Yeah. Like that. So that, that's always good. Yeah. I also have... Which I is firm. In okay, it. yeah. And that has basically every day. So it's just a normal normal journal. You can write in it. It's got yeah. questions on each and it gets you to think. So when you look at it, it gets you to question things like who's who's annoyed you today, you know, and how would you deal with that? So it gives you questions that you can answer and write next to it. Okay. So I have those two things. I listen to different audios um, yeah. about confidence, and one of them is Meeting Your Mean Girl, just because 
I'm, I'm obviously not me, but it's just to get that strength back. And I always, find, like, you know, it's not even long. I listen to it in the car on the way to work. It's like yeah. 10 minutes. Um, but it just builds that optimism in your mind. It changes mm-hmm. your mindset every day. Um, I also have dotted around the house. I'm not going to show you those. I have dotted around the house um, quotes because I love quotes. I, post, I, I put them everywhere. Um, so I've got uh, pretty, fabulous, clever, smart, and yep, that's you. And that's actually in my office. Um, oh. And then I've got, I've got you're braver than you think. Also, I've just got random ones. And it's got, oh, I've got one by my bed that says, always be thankful. So it literally just is a quote that says, always be thankful. Yeah. Um, and I have to put things in my house. I, you know, my boyfriend buys me loads of stuff anyway, um, which actually puts up on how much he loves and cares about me. So that's all dotted around the house. Mm. Uh, just, just because I love to be, feel like I'm loved, obviously. Um, <laughs> and I also have my little grateful jar, which is here, which I haven't done yet today. Okay. Uh, so it's a memory jar as well. Um, uh. So uh. I've got little bits that you can keep in it. Yeah. So write in that um, every week, me and my partner write in it. And we write down the one thing that makes us happy that week that each other of us done. And we open it Christmas in a year and read all the way through them, which is, we did it the first time was last year, actually. We've been together nine years. It was the first time we did it. And I think we surprised each other because it was the first time I actually got my boyfriend to start cooking. Mm. Yeah. Um, so if I'm at work and I'm working late, he will actually cook. Mm. Um, which is really nice so we were putting in stuff like you know I'm really happy that you know you now cook with me or you cook for me kind of thing and it kind of went from that to you know I really hope you enjoy your birthday to and it was all those sorts of things like I hope you enjoy Vegas I hope you feel better because we're all getting ill yeah but it was different things like that with dates and signs and stuff yeah Uh, yeah yeah, sorry sorry (laughs) yeah that's it (laughs) cool no that sounds it sounds so positive and it sounds more positive maybe than someone that had a normal childhood um because i maybe you have to go through something really low to be able to really celebrate the highs as well yeah i think i think that's it you kind of obviously i went down like really hard and it kind of like you have to pick not even like have someone else pick you up you have to kind of pick yourself up and this is what people forget like people can say you know you're fine you'll be you know you'll be all right but you're thinking oh will i and you and you have to think it yourself it's like um and i adore quotes and i will look at them all the time which is a bit crazy but um there is one and it said you know you've got to love yourself and I spoke about this before, you've got to love yourself first before you can love someone else. Mm-hmm. And I said, it wasn't for ages that I really got that quote. Like, I really understood it. And I and, um, and I said, the other trick I'd always say is self-care. Because I'm the person that runs around after everyone else. Like, as I, and I probably do now. I still run around after everyone else, but I take a step back and go, right, I need to do something for myself, whether that's, you know, 20 minutes watching my own TV program or just having a hot chocolate with marshmallows. Um, Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Good one. (laughs) But yeah, it's things like that. It's kind of like over the last year, I've realised like I really put myself in last place. Like I didn't matter to anything. No, and my boyfriend never made me feel like that. It was just how I felt. Mm-hmm. And it was getting that back to being in that frame of mind where I'm not the person that needs to be treated last. I'm not the person that needs to keep running around after everyone else. Mm-hmm. But it's just, that was how I did everything. And it was a way to keep myself busy and not really deal with anything. And I think that's how people get around stuff. They go, right, I'm just going to do this, this, this. And they're they're so busy doing all of that that they just forget about themselves Mm. and then you just kind of lose track of yourself 
Yeah, that's uh, actually a great message because that was one of the pillars that I built this network on because um, I think especially as a woman, it's so easy to say, oh, I need to look after the kids and then I need to walk the dog and I need to do the cooking and da, 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 da. And then somewhere there in the bottom of the list, maybe uh, there, there's, there, there's me. Um, so I, it's, it's really good that you bring that up and it just confirms that you are for a reason an honorary member of the group um and yeah no it was really really nice um to have you uh if there are no questions i'll just wait for a little bit because there's always a bit of a delay um yeah so i'd really like to thank you um thank you for sharing your story um if anyone wants to talk about what maybe what happened to them or has any questions is that all right if they get in yeah. touch with you get in touch but yeah that would be great if anyone has any questions cool. yeah if, and yeah if it, if it didn't if, it, if this interview can just help one person out there that had a, a a similar childhood and that feels a bit understood and not alone then i think it's no, a no, great achievement i think a lot of people just find it so much because it is that taboo subject that no one really wants to talk about mm. and i think the more it's out there in a way like you know you've got to get you've got to speak about it because that's the way as humans that we heal mm. and i think i think i realized that when i did my blog it's the one way of like getting things out of your system and actually really going through it in your own head that you then learn to heal a bit more from everything that's happened. I mean, obviously, um, you know, as I said, I've got my business, which is great. And it does stand for exactly, you know, the women, like a woman like me, you know, mm -hmm. it does for amazing foundation for sexually abused women. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it's so powerful for me. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's not just one one company that doesn't support something and I said that's the one thing I've done there are other charities I support I support yeah. a cancer charity you know um and there are things that will come up you know my dad I know my dad I got told that my dad died of cancer when he went and that's how he died he died of bowel cancer and there's been a lot of cancer in my family so it's not something I wouldn't support mm. so there's things in my life that I'm gonna go right okay then I want to support that and I want to support that mm. um yeah the company i work for is you know and it's got amazing people in it that really mm -hmm. lift you up and yeah. they all care and that's how you know you kind of feel mm -hmm. it, it's like an extension of family <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know it's a little bit odd but to say that but it is no, that's okay it's just you need to find your, your tribe almost so um i'm yeah. really really happy you you found your your place and um yeah so thank you for sharing your story and um i shall post all the links in the comments and thank you very much and i shall see everyone next week yeah. have a good day and a good start to the week yep yeah, you too bye